Voices serves as the megaphone for individuals who have endured transformational change. By highlighting trials and triumphs, our desire is to create a safe space for pivotal conversations, which in turn will deepen the story and provoke hope for you, our listeners. As you may know, change is never easy, but it is inevitable. You are not alone in what you're facing. Your transformation is possible, purposeful, and now. And here's Aaron Wiggum, founder and managing director of New You, with this week's guest. Welcome to another edition of New Voices. We have a wonderful guest with us today. This man here is changing lives. He's changing the game. He's changing his city. He's changing his legacy. And we, I'm really excited because we go way back uh, over 20 years ago. I'm not going to date he or I, uh, but we go back over 20 years ago. And I've seen the transformation happen. And I've seen him do some amazing things. We're going to get into his journey. This man is a father. He's a husband. He's a creative. He is a blueprint for success. And I'm excited to bring to this platform and to our audience none other than Ime Alaquiva. Ime, welcome to join the New Voices today. What's up, everybody? Um, I know we go super way back. Um, my name's Ime Alaquiva. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure, man, to be on the show. I know we, uh, went back and forth and coordinating schedules and things of that nature, but that's what happens, right? When we're making moves and we're, uh, out here, you know, trying to change the world, sometimes the schedules don't line up, but they line up right now. So good to be on the show, Aaron. Likewise, man. Glad to have you. Yeah. So I want to, I want to take it all the way back. Um, generally when we start these conversations, we want to go back to the beginning uh, and just tell people a little bit about your story. You can start as early and as, as uh, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Yeah, no, no, sure. I'm from uh, Pittsburgh um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We're from a, a town called Wilkinsburg. And some of the earliest thing, of course, related to what I do and how I change the world. At the age of 13, uh, I was big, bad and tough. I thought. You know, nobody could tell me nothing. I was hard-headed, um, prideful, and um, I tried to sell drugs. You know, and at the age of 13, I really didn't have a lot of mentors surrounding me. And I thought that that was how I can sort of get into, you know, my manhood. And I can be the man on the block, right? Yeah. Um, so I tried to sell drugs in a town called Homewood. The first mm -hmm. day that I uh, tried to sell drugs was the first day I got a 45 stuck to my temple. Mm. And, you know, going through that, you know, as a 13 year old boy, it was like, oh my goodness, you know, this isn't the path that I want to take. So, you know, that didn't work. So I fell in love with hip hop around that time. Uh, there was a group called the name, uh, called uh, De La Soul. Mm -hmm. and De La Soul had, a song out called Me, Myself, and I. And That's my it. mother had purchased the cassette tape kind of for the wrong reasons, but it changed my life. She bought it because it reminded her of a song that she used to listen to back uh, in the day, in her day, called Rapper Dapper Snapper. Okay. I think that's the Rapper Dapper. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But um, And then another song. So she brings this cassette tape home. I listen to it over and over and over and over and over again. And the way De La spoke to my soul mm. uh, was transformative because they had a song called Me, Myself, and I. And at that time, not really having like a whole bunch of mentors. My mom worked two jobs, busted her butt to provide for me and my sister. Me, myself, and I, that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. So started to dig into hip-hop more. Had Always had hip-hop in my back pocket. I started to write raps. I was in a group called Pencils in a Cup with uh, uh, my my brother, Achilles Soon, Super C, Roland Matthews. And, you know, I always had hip-hop that was there, but... 
growing up, life kind of gets in the way of living sometimes, right? Yeah. My sister um, in the early 90s was diagnosed with HIV AIDS. Mm. And this was at a time where a lot of people didn't understand what really went into that disease. So there was a lot of prejudice against my sister Mm. to the point where, you know, she had to take literally a, a, a shopping bag of medicine and medication and things of that nature that always made her weak and things of that nature. Yeah. And I remember my sister being too weak to go upstairs to, to use, to relieve herself. Mm. So she had to do it literally in the living room. And over the course of, you know, these months and these years, having to come home and literally as soon as I opened the door, my sister was right there, you know, and that does a lot uh, to your mental health. Absolutely. Especially at a time where <clears throat> a lot of people weren't talking about what mental health meant. Right. I come from a generation where it's just like, oh, you don't got to talk about that. We don't, you know, you ain't crazy, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Just do your thing. Suck it up. Be tough. Be a man. Don't be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But it takes a toll. <clears throat> and it took so much of a toll on me that I dropped out of high school. Mm-hmm. Literally my last year because it was too much to take on what was going on at my house, what was going on at school and things of that nature. And also that year, my sister ended up passing away. Oh, wow. So uh, my sister left uh, behind two incredible human beings, uh, two daughters, Triana, Laquina. I had to kind of step in and fill that void Mm -hmm. of fatherhood. And my mother really didn't take it well. So I had to be there for my mom and things of that nature. So it rendered me to drop out. And eventually, all of this heavy duty life that sometimes is on the backs of black men. Mm -hmm. If we don't handle it right, we, Mm -hmm. we can't process it. So it rendered me homeless in the streets of Pittsburgh Mm. because I was depressed. Yeah. So for a year and a half, I was sleeping under bridges, eating at Jubilee kitchen, rainbow kitchen, taking showers at the YMCA salvation army, um, and really taking all of this on because I didn't have an outlet on how to process this information and also how to process these emotions and these feelings. So one day there was a shop called Originals Hot Dog Shop in Pittsburgh. Yes. And Stay across cool. the street was a, a gray wall that a lot of people from various neighborhood, neighborhoods would sit on. So I remember these two individuals, they sat on this gray wall eating their French fries. They just got them, blah, blah, blah. One turned around, you know, not necessarily knowing that I was sleeping there on the bench, but one turned around and spit on me. Mm. And it was at that moment I was like, listen, I'm in my early 20s. I can't shake this. I need to suck it up. I need to put my pride aside. And I went over to a payphone. Uh, There were pay phones at the time. I put in 25. (laughs) I called my mom. I said, Mom, I've been homeless for a year and a half. Can I sleep on your couch until I get my life together? And Mm -hmm. and my mom was like, why are you being so Mm hard-headed? You know, why are you being such a tough guy? Why did it take you so long, you know, to to call me? Of course you can come in. Let's figure it out together. So I slept on my mom's couch. You know, every time she had company, I would run down in the basement and hide, just being ashamed, you know, being this black man living with his mom, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But it was at that moment that I realized if I did not count on other people Mm -hmm. and if I continue to think that I can do everything by myself, I am going to end up by myself. That's it. So I literally had to think about it from a metaphoric state Mm -hmm. because I loved hip hop. Mm -hmm. So what I did is while I slept on my mom's couch, I came up with a plan and I used the four elements of hip hop. I said, there are four elements, four core elements of hip hop. There's DJing, MCing, breakdancing, and graffiti. Mm -hmm. Follow me. All right. I know you listening. I know y'all watching, but just follow me. Mm -hmm. So, If I'm a lover of hip hop, the DJ is the foundation of hip hop. Mm -hmm. 
it provides the rhythm. So I said to myself, how am I going to find my melody? How am I going to find the melody of my life in order to create the song of change that I need for the rest of my life? Mm. Number two, the MC. How will I use my voice? How would I network, talk to people, create relationships and build relationships by using my voice? Mm -hmm. Creating relationships. How can I be the MC or the rapper of my life mm -hmm. to create change? Yeah. Number three, breakdancing. B-boy. It's moving. Mm -hmm. I metaphorically thought to myself, how am I going to move in these spaces? Yes, I was homeless. But I need to move to get out. I need to move to create a dream. Mm -hmm. And I need to move to get around people that can help take me to the next level. That's yeah. breakdancing. It's mm -hmm. the way you move. Mm -hmm. The world was just my cardboard. Mm -hmm. Number and, and number four, graffiti. Graffiti goes back all the way to ancient times, you mm -hmm. know, Egypt. But regardless Little do we know, we write graffiti every single day when we're on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all yeah. of these. You're writing graffiti mm -hmm. because you're creating your legacy by what you type and what you put out to the rest of the world to digest about you. Mm -hmm. So I use those four elements of hip hop to change my life around. I opened a recording studio in 2001 out of 300 square feet of space. Every dollar I, I made, I put 90 cents back into the business. Mm -hmm. Hired my first employee in 2005 that's still with us today. Wow. Got a job at uh, Whammo, which is the uh, radio station here in Pittsburgh. <clears throat> and I started an uh, 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 arts education program called Hip Hop on Lock which is in currently in 48 partnerships, 12 school districts. So I'm saying that to underscore that regardless of what it is that we go through, as long as we calibrate our life, calibrate our mission, we can make a change. And that's what I did in order to take my old voice into my new voice, into a new uh, way of life. Wow, that's powerful. There's so many uh, points there that, that I could lean into. Um, one thing I want to kind of go over, though, you talked about being from Wilkinsburg and you talked about this path out of the Berg um, into manhood. Right. Let's talk a little bit about that conversion from boyhood. I can do it myself. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't need nobody else to manhood where you realized no, I'm going to have to stand on my own two feet, but that's once my feet are sure. And in order to get my feet sure, I have to have support in order to do that. Let's talk about that conversion and how that um, echoes throughout um, not, not only our communities, but we're hearing this throughout the country right now where men are being asked to kind of make that conversion to be more sure footed and go from uh, being a. Uh, a a someone who is not most beneficial for the community to someone who is building community now. So can you talk a little bit about that? <clears throat> yeah, I think a, a, a very important part of transitioning into your manhood is using examples of transitions. Yes. Yep. Right. So that's where mentorship is so important because Whoever you're a mentee of, 10 times out of 10, there's someone that you can idolize their transition through life. Yeah. Or their transition in a particular industry, mm -hmm. whether that be academic, entertainment, film, photography. You have to use someone as an example of a tr someone who trans transitions very well excuse me mm -hmm. <clears throat> so chris moore who is undoubtedly one of the greatest american treasures mm -hmm. he worked at wqed multimedia yeah channel 13 which is the 
public broadcast station here in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Someone asked him, do you know someone who raps? Because we want to put together a PSA to encourage children to stay in school and get a mind of their own. Mm. So Chris Moore said, I know this young man from Wilkinsburg who has a group called Pencils in a Cup. They might be excellent for this. Wow. So we got the call. And when I tell you, it was almost like an instant light bulb Mm -hmm. that said, you know what? This man right here is an example of what I want to be when I grow up. Mm. Chris Moore uh, also came into my life. He took on, you know, a father figure in my life. And, you know, we, we built that relationship over decades. And I literally call him Pops now. Wow. Because he's been such a transformative vessel in the canal of my, 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 my life. Mm-hmm. So that is what helped me to transition from boyhood to mm-hmm. uh, manhood at being able to say, all right, you know what? I know what's possible. So Chris Moore was just one of those examples. And then I started intercepting and adopting other mentors. Okay. That would stay on my toes, hold me accountable, you know, Listen, you ain't doing too well. I need you to come over here. I need you to come over here. This is what it means to be a husband. Mm -hmm. This is what it means to be a father. These are the responsibilities and the tasks that comes with fatherhood, that comes with being married and being in a successful marriage. So all of these little small things, um, what I like to tell people is silk is the strongest material in the world mm-hmm. bar none mm-hmm. but is it is as thin as a hair follicle mm-hmm. what we have to realize is we need that silk in our life to help us to create that web yeah. of whatever we want to catch mm-hmm. for our life so i found strong silk around me mm-hmm. and it made me stronger silk so that's why You know, when I was homeless, I promised God, allow me to get on my feet and I'll spend the rest of my life helping others get on theirs. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. That's what's up. That's what's up. Wow. Uh, It's been so interesting um, watching your career evolve. I remember the days of the Shadow Lounge and and, and your mom's house being up top, the studio and, uh, you know, seeing you on the block, seeing you up up the way over on Princeton Boulevard, shout out yes, to sir. Princeton Park and whatnot. Yes, sir. Um, and so I, I've seen your evolution. I'm, I'm just so proud of you, man. I tell you all the time, you know, so, so proud of the progress that you've made. Um, what I, what I, I'm, so we're going to talk about the highlights in a minute. I want to spend one more moment just in the ascent, like sure. the, the, the perseverance it takes and took to ascend as you know, you're learning a culture you may not, you may not exactly know you're learning business strategies that maybe not, they're not, they're not natural from where we come from, right? We're from the same neighborhood. It, yes. These business concepts and strategies aren't natural to us, but yeah. there's a, there's a grit and there's a grind and there's a, uh, you ain't going to punk me. That's in all of us, right? That's, that's in the, 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 the water in Pittsburgh, uh, if we bleed this, you ain't going to punk me spirit. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what I, I, I want to just talk about the perseverance it took to ascend. Um, as you coming out of this, the state, you go back to your mom's house, you're sleeping on the couch. And then, you know, next thing you know, Chris Moore and different ones begin to rally around you, help to cultivate you to, to, to ascend. Talk about the perseverance it took navigating that ascent. And then, once you started to get up there, was there, were you full of fear or were you full of excitement? What, what, what did you feel in that, in those times? Well, here's the thing, man. Um, I tell people all the time, when you know what dirt tastes like, everything <laughs> above dirt tastes good. That's good. That's good. I'm going to say it again. Yeah. When you know what dirt tastes like, yeah, everything above that is a blessing. Yeah. Right. Um, I've been through it all. 
Yeah. And I don't look like what I've been through. Yeah. But that's because I dug within myself and I was tired of going without. Mm. So that's when I went within. And if you're listening to this broadcast or you're watching this broadcast, whatever it is that you're going through, you know, I understand, but there is a level to this mm. and there's a level that you can sort of get out. It's just all about curating your moves and making sure that those moves make sense, not only to yourself, but the people around you. Mm -hmm. So how I was able to ascend is first I had a, I got to make it happen regardless. Like I have no choice, right? Like I developed a plan a, and I had no band plan B yeah. for a plan B. Yeah, that's good. Plan B was out the window. Plan C was out the window. The rest of the alphabet. Yeah. All 25 letters of my plan were eliminated when I focused on a, mm. and I had a job at the post office that my mother helped me to get as uh, what's called a casual mm -hmm. in which you only uh, work at the post office for six months as a mm -hmm. six month casual. Every time I delivered mail and I went on my route, I, I just began to just circle in my head what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, things of that nature, who I wanted to connect with, what I literally wanted my life to be. Um, and then after that six months, uh, <laughs> one of my mother's friends who worked at the post office in Wilkinsburg on Hay Street, yep. uh, there was a guy by the name of John Hill that had a P.O. box there. John Hill was the engineer for this radio station called WURP that was in a town called Forest Hills. Mm -hmm. So John Hill goes to collect his mail. And one of my mother's friends said, Oh, you work at a radio station. My nephew um, loves radio and he loves music. And John Hill said, all right, well, cool. You know, and God bless the dead, you know, may his soul rest in peace. He said, all right, well, you know, tell him to give me a call. So I gave John Hill a call mm -hmm. and there was a position open as a Tom Joyner morning show producer. And I ended up getting the job there at WURP as a Tom Joyner morning show producer mm -hmm. in which all I did was press the buttons, you mm -hmm. know, on, on the equipment and things of that nature. Yep. But that was one of those pillars, as I like to call. Mm hmm that held my new foundation up. Mm -hmm. John Hill, Chris Moore, uh, Chris Squire, mm -hmm. um, I am Way Lacey. The list goes on of individuals that helped me to ascend to new areas. TJ, uh, another uh, great mentor of mine, my big brother TJ, he was the production director at Whammo. Mm -hmm. uh, and when he left Whammo, he told them my name to come and replace him. Right. So I would have never, ever in the history of America thought that I would be homeless in getting a job to, to oversee three radio stations. Wow. And, and, and here's the thing, Aaron, I was sleeping in the studio and the studio was only 300 square feet. I was sleeping there and taking bat. Talk like, about it. Washing up. Talk was, about it. Yeah, I was washing up in the bathrooms at my studio because I had nowhere to live. Mm. And when I got the job at Whammo, I would secretly sleep in the vocal booth. Mm. But I knew I had to do what I had to do, and I didn't give a damn of what anybody thought about my journey. Yeah. Because my journey was my journey. I had to own it first. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And whoever's listening to this, own your journey first. Yeah. And then allow vessels to swarm around you. Select your vessels. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. So, you know, when we talk about ascending into new levels, um, 
that's what I did is, is, is I understood the, the, the assignment mm -hmm. and allow people to come into my space and help me, me get there. Yeah, that's good. Okay. We just got a few minutes left. I want to, I want to get into that ascent now. So let's start sure. talking about what, you know, you, you're climbing the mountain and you're seeing the, the dots connect. Right. Um, and what's the first big call you got, um, that that really like made you drop your cell phone like you like uh, ho hold on it was, who's calling me you know what's the first big call you got i wouldn't say big call but transformative call okay um one of my mentors candy cassaberry mm -hmm. candy cassaberry was yes a head of dignity and respect campaign i believe that's what it was called at upmc mm-hmm one of the first big things that like, like, oh, snap, this is really happening. Mm -hmm. She hired me to shoot and direct a video um, for young people for the Dignity and Respect campaign. Mm -hmm. After I did that, she hired me to do a video for the Maya Angelou School in Washington, D.C. Yeah, we did that. And then we traveled to D.C. with Candy Castleberry and we met uh, Maya Angelou. Dr. Maya Angelou, she had to hurry up and get on her tour bus to get ready to travel out. <clears throat> so she really didn't have a chance to meet us in D.C. Mm -hmm. So she said, you know what? I promise um, we'll connect again. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, it was great, you know, being in D.C., you know, la da 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 So a couple months go by and we get a call from Dr. Maya Angelou inviting us to her home to meet her, yeah. interview her about what dignity and respect means to her. Mm. And that was literally right then and there, like taking a tour of Dr. Maya Angelou's house, mm. her awards that she got, everything. She showed me a Rolls Royce that Tyler Perry purchased for her. Wow. That was in the garage that she never, <laughs> she never drove. Wow. Seeing pictures with the Clintons and presidents and dignitaries and things of that nature. It was mind blowing to me. Mm. Even to this day, people are like, who is the number one person that you worked with? Mm -hmm. It's not Jay-Z. I work with Jay-Z. I work mm -hmm. with Beyonce, Kanye, mm -hmm. 50, you mm -hmm. name it. No one on this planet will ever top Dr. Maya Angelou. Wow. And that one was one of the calls, and this was over 10 years ago, that mm -hmm. literally changed my life forever. Wow. That's huge, man. That's huge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did she did she impart anything into you? Um, and I know that the impact she had, but uh, speaking specifically to impartation, was there anything that she imparted into you that you feel like you give to the world today? Yeah. Um, I think that's just being unapologetically who I am. Good. Um, despite the adversity that we go through, mm -hmm. um, we have to learn how to manufacture the adversity mm. into the awesomeness. Wow. Okay. She taught me that, that, you know, adversity is good for you. Mm -hmm. You should have adversity yeah. because it, it, it builds us into who we are. And yeah. the number one thing that Dr. Maya Angelou taught me is that you have to learn how to use the bricks of your past mm. to build the castle of your, future. your future. That's good. Yeah. You, you see how I drop bars real quick? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm doing it with with Dr. Maya Angelou in mind. Yeah. The bricks of your past should always help to build the castle of your future. Wow. That's what I'm doing. That's huge, man. Well, I'll, I only have uh, two more questions. Sure. Um, in this uh, on New Voices, this platform, we um, like I told you earlier, we are becoming or we look to become the really the bullhorn for pivotal conversations uh, with a message of hope. Right. And so my question to you is, how do you 
how did you through that journey and how do you currently hold on to hope uh, with so much that you've been through with, you know, the contracts that you didn't know were going to happen with the, 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 uh, the payroll that you got to make regardless of, you know, what's coming or what's not coming. Yeah. How, how did you and do you hold on to hope uh, as, as, th throughout this journey? Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to tell you my mission. Okay. This is my professional mission. And I encourage everyone to help or <clears throat> I, I encourage everyone to develop theirs. Mm -hmm. It might take a while, might take weeks, might take months, who knows. But everyone on listening should develop their mission statement, their professional mm -hmm. mission statement. My professional mission statement is to crystallize the human spirit through cinematic and purposeful storytelling. Okay. That is literally what I do with my life all day long on a mm -hmm. professional uh, uh, level. So the hope that is in me is being able to tell these stories of the human spirit. Mm -hmm. This is therapeutic for me. Yeah. When I do photography, when I do films and direct films and things of that nature, this is all therapeutic for me. This yeah. is creative therapy for me. Yeah. So that's how I hold on <laughs> to hope is understanding my mission Mm -hmm. after I've created it and then put in the necessary energy and the frequency associated with that mission to change lives. Yeah. Uh, when some people, they'd be like, Oh, you know, you're a filmmaker. I'm not a filmmaker. Yeah. Oh, you're a photographer. I'm not a photographer. I am a cinematic poet. Mm. Okay. And poetry just happens to come through my camera. Yeah. I don't know how to make films. I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know the plastics and all the other stuff. Yeah. But I do know how to tell poetry of the human spirit. Wow. Through a camera. Man. And you and you certainly if you look if you all just look over his left shoulder, you can see the uh, results of those stories he's told with those Emmys along the uh, <laughs> the panel there. Uh those are real <laughs> Emmys by the way. Uh yes that he's earned through this work, <laughs> crystallizing these stories. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you kind of touched on my last question, which is around a call to action. Sure. Uh, so you, you said for individuals to create their own personal mission statement. Yes. Right. And so that's one call to action. What, what's a leaving a lasting thought that you will want to leave with the audience around a call to action for them? Uh, in addition to that, um, all right. So here's the thing. I'm going to do something a little different. Okay. Everyone listening, watching, I want you to develop your mission statement and I want you to share it with me. I want to nice. build with you, whether that's through email, DM message, whatever, reach out to me. I want to help look over your mission statement, what it means, what it feels, da da da, and things of that nature. And let's connect and let's build. Um, new voices is all about meeting other new voices. Mm -hmm. I don't know you, uh, you're listening to me, but I, I never heard you. I love to hear your voice. So let's connect. Um, you can feel free to go to my website, emailalaquiva.com. Feel free to hit me on Instagram, uh, email underscore alaquiva on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, so on and so forth. And I look forward to uh, building with you all soon. But that is your call to action. Connect with me. Thank you. Nice. Nice. You could tell he's done this before because he, he he led right into that last piece. Uh, he, knew ex <laughs> he knew exactly what I was going with that. So you heard the call from him, uh, the man himself. Um, when I tell you he will respond, there's never been a time I've reached out to this brother that he has not responded to me. Uh, and then within moments, too, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we've done some work together at Penn State. And and um, like I said, I'm just I'm so proud of you, man. I want you to I keep going. It. And, uh, you know, you're going to are you doing the, the Roots picnic again this year? Or, or Absolutely. Or, I'll be I'll be there with uh, with Diddy and, and, and Lauren Hill and, and, and others, man. So nice for it meeting folks out there as well yeah wonderful well i thank you for your time um keep pressing on we are going to take this and really uh take these words to live by and put them into action 
Um, for those of you who just listened to this, we want you to take some time and also follow us on our social media at uh, with LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. NewUTulsa.com is the website, and on those channels, it is at NewUTulsa. Uh, we thank you for listening, and we hope that there was some, something that was shared that will really spark uh, a, 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 your life. It will spark a new understanding, a new revelation in your life, and uh, we're excited to hear what these stories will bring. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of New Voices. Visit our website at www.newutulsa.com. That is N-E-W-U Tulsa.com. Follow us on social media at New U Tulsa on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And a special thank you to our producer, Jesse Ulrich. If you're looking for self-improvement, join our free cohorts for personal and professional development opportunities. New U is a way for diverse talent to imagine, discover, and actualize a 2.0 version of yourself. Bring your future into focus.